Hello, everyone. Welcome to Out of Spec Guide. I'm Max, and I'm joined by Kyle, who you'll recognize if you watch any of the other Out of Spec channels. Welcome on. Hey, thanks for having me on the Guide channel, Max. Yeah, super excited to have you on. And today I want to discuss kind of a topic that people might see floating around, but just charging speed. What does it mean? What do these numbers mean that you might see 150, 350, 20? Uh, and in a lot of cases, you might see for your car, oh, this car gets 80 miles of uh, range an hour on this outlet. What does that mean? So that's kind of what I wanted to go over today. And uh, where do you think, Kyle, a good place to start uh, with this conversation is? Yeah, and I think it's how do we quantify charging speed and why does it even matter? I mean, ultimately, what we're finding a lot of out there are, you know, for example, the other day I saw an ID4 owner, you know, needing to charge on the 350 charger. And I was like, okay, but you really don't need to. So let's first talk about, you know, how to quantify charge speed which charging station typically is right for the current situation that you're in briefly we'll have more topics on that but then also um you know what is the cars what is your car's maximum but before we go out any further max is going to compile a list uh, a google doc list which we can add to if you comment as well of the most popular electric cars on sale and their maximum theoretical charging speed, which means that is if everything is perfect, the fastest that car can charge. So if you're curious what your car can do, click that link in the description and we'll do our best to make sure it's as accurate as possible. Um, but let's start both with the ways that you can measure the charging speed. Now, typically that will be shown when you roll up to a charger, it'll say, you know, 150 KW you'll see on there. And the KW is, you know, kilowatts or a thousand watts. So 150,000 watts. We'll have different topics coming on as to watts versus volts versus amps. It doesn't actually matter what the KW means. You don't really need to even think about that. You just need to understand 150 350 is more than 150, which is more than 50. It's basic, simple math right there. So if you're in a car that can accept pretty good power and you plug into a 50 kilowatt charger, you're probably going to get less than if you plug into a 350 kilowatt charger. That's a fairly simple concept. The higher the number, the faster you're charging. But these charge times can vary rapidly depending on what you're plugging into. And, um, you know, so much so that let's say you're driving one of these new large battery vehicles, like a Rivian R1T, for example, it might take three, three and a half hours to charge that if you plug it in on a 50 kilowatt charger, whereas it might only take 45 minutes to an hour if you plug it into a 350 kilowatt. So just major differences. That's why this video is so important. And really all I wanted to do was give our audience a gist of, Okay, 50 kilowatt, you know, okay, let's say home charging seven kilowatts, 10 kilowatts, whatever you get at home. That's really freaking slow. But it's not bad that it's slow because the car's sitting there all night charging. So it'll be full every morning for you. And so fast charging isn't always better charging. And so, you know, for home charging, seven kilowatts, 10 kilowatts. If you have an F 150 Lightning with the 80 amp charger, you know, 19 kilowatts, that's great. That's perfect. Yeah. But for fast charging, you know, that's where I think the times really matter. Don't you think, Max? Yeah, I agree. That's where you really want to see, hopefully, right, your 20, 30 minute charge session. Let's say it's the right vehicle. You're getting to the, you know, where you want to be in terms of percentage of battery and range and all that. Uh, and so, yeah, it's typically I think you just want to see it expressed in a universal way. That's why we're talking about this KW metric, right? Kilowatts, 150, 350. Um, my big beef is a lot of car manufacturers, when they're advertising to people, will say, oh, this car gets 20 miles of whatever range in some amount of time. And why do we not like that, Kyle, as like a metric? Yeah, well, there's there's a couple different reasons why I don't like miles per hour of charging or miles per minute of charging. And the the first really is is everyone drives a bit differently and everyone drives a bit differently in different conditions. And so if you're middle of the winter here in Colorado, for that same amount of time, you're probably going to drive less because your car is going to be less efficient versus South Florida, no wind, perfect conditions. So from an advertising standpoint, I actually think it's a bit misleading to say your car will travel X number of miles after charging X number of minutes uh, at a fast charger because 
it won't like everyone drives differently. And so those are typically based off of the EPA stated range figures of the car, which also, if you already own one of these cars, you'll probably realize you're either getting more or less than what the range number says. You're not hitting it every time. And so they're very variable. So I really don't like that. The other thing, especially the Tesla world is actually notorious for this. Um, you know, for example, if you're charging at a set power level, let's say you're charging at 200 kilowatts, doesn't matter what car that's going into, doesn't matter anything that is power. And that is, you know, a set amount of, of power going into a vehicle. A model X is less efficient than a model three. So for that same amount of power, the model X will have a lower miles per hour charge rate than the model three, even though they're taking in the same amount of energy. And uh, that to me is a little bit misleading because I hear people at superchargers from time to time saying, oh, I'm charging at a thousand miles per hour. And then some guy, you know, in a Model X towing a trailer is like, I'm doing 600, but they're getting the same power. So <laughs> yeah, pretty crazy. Yeah, if someone taped some foil to the Model S then they could be getting 2000 miles an hour. Who knows? <laughs> exactly. It's just not a good metric. It's a good metric when you're thinking about your specific car. Because typically, you know, you can say, okay, last charging session, I saw it hit, you know, 800 miles per hour. This one, I saw it hit 850. And if that's based off of a rated range calculation like Tesla, I know we're getting nerdy, then you know you're charging faster than the new one. But it's, you know, what's way simpler than all of this is just to use kilowatts. It's a simple number. And yeah, so and you can uh, compare it directly across every car and everything. It's universal. It's a standard. That's why we use standards. And that's why. Uh, the kilowatt is a beautiful metric. Now, that doesn't always mean you're going to be guaranteed to, let's say you see a 150 or a 200 rating on a charger. You might not necessarily see that charge, but that's the maximum um, output that it's capable of. Right. So then we get to the two main points that everyone needs to understand when road tripping an electric car. It is what is the theoretical maximum my car can take and what is the maximum the charger can give me? And there are some exceptions to this rule, but pretty much if you have a, I'm going to use a Volkswagen uh, ID4 as an example, the new ones can charge at about 180, 185 kilowatts. I think they're advertised at 175 and we've seen up to 190 peak, somewhere around there. Pretty fast charging speeds. So if that car can charge at 180 and you plug it into a 150 kilowatt charger, well, you know that the charger is going to be the limitation right there in that case. But if you have the ID4 that can charge at 190 kilowatts, 180 kilowatts, and you plug it into a 350 kilowatt charger, let's just say, you know that the charger can give you everything that your car needs, as an example. Now, it's really important to A, understand the maximum your car can take, and B, understand the maximum your charger can give you. Don't forget those two things. It's the most important thing when road tripping. For example, if you have a Bolt that can only charge at 50 kilowatts or so, it's a little bit more, but some, some right around there, there's no reason to plug into a more than 50 kilowatt charger. If there's a 50 kilowatt charger right there and a 350 kilowatt charger right next to it, you will not be charging any faster on the 350 in theory. That's the idea, unless there's a hardware malfunction. And so I think those two metrics we'll have in the document and we'll do more videos on them. But what I really want to give people the impression is what is fast, you know, is 50 kilowatt fast charging. You know, if you're seeing you're pulling in 50 kilowatts, is that great? Well, in today's world, that's honestly really slow. Um, you know, a lot of older EV technology, Leaf Bolt, uh, e-Golf, i3, Ionic, they can't charge it more than 50 kilowatts, but that's really slow. I agree with you, Kyle, it's slow, but we do have to consider, you mentioned this earlier, right? A Model X, for instance, the big Tesla SUV is less efficient than the smaller Model 3. So while the Bolt and Leaf, I'm not going to argue with you, they're slow chargers in today's world, uh, they're not as slow as you might think by the numbers, right? Like 50 versus 350. Whoa, huge difference. But the Bolt and the Leaf sit power relative to a lot of other cars because they're so they're small and they're just darn efficient. Uh, so this is why we're expressing everything in kilowatts. We're trying to make it as comparable as possible because every car is different. So if you're driving a Rivian R1S or a BMW iX or some large SUV, then um, you're going to want fast charging as a necessity because uh, that car just takes more energy. So to get the same amount of miles on the road, you'll hopefully you know have the car like an iX that has the high charge rating and then encounter a charger that is capable of beating it, let's say 200 kilowatts or more. Uh, and if you don't, 
then that's when you're in trouble, right? When you have these large battery vehicles that get stuck on a slower charger, that in my opinion, is kind of like the worst case scenario. Absolutely. And I'm glad you brought up that point because even though the i3 especially or a Leaf or a Bolt only charge at 50 kilowatts, for the amount of energy that they're getting in that time, they can go farther because they're so much more efficient than a Rivian, than a Model X, than an iX, an e-tron or anything like that. So efficiency plays a big, big factor in this. But if you're on a road trip, the goal is to get as much energy into your car as possible in the shortest amount of time if you're just charger hopping and you know, what would be considered fast charging in that case. And that is a definition that everyone's going to be a little bit different on depending on their car. Like you said, Max, I three owners may feel like 50 kilowatt charging is awesome. That's fast. You might have a Hummer EV that can accept 365 kilowatts and to them it'll feel slow because that thing uses so much electricity just to get down the road. So they're not mm -hmm. actually gaining that much range per time plugged in. So there are those two different metrics and they are relevant, but what really it comes down to utilizing the infrastructure with your car is understanding kilowatt power. And, you know, basically all you need to know is the higher the power, the faster you're charging. So my recommendation, you know, a gut feeling, if you will, regardless of efficiency on car, if we talk about what is fast, 50 kilowatts is pretty slow. 100 kilowatts is like bare minimum acceptable for most cars that can take it. That's like, you know, you'll never find me sitting in a charger less than 100 kilowatts unless I have to sit there and charge in most long range electric cars. 150 kilowatts, that's where I'm like, okay, I'm not annoyed now. 150, no longer annoyed. A lot of the early EV drivers like are thinking like 20 kilowatts, I'm no longer annoyed. No, we want fast charging, 150 kilowatts, okay, reasonable. 200 kilowatts oh now it's spicy okay that's a lot of you know start inching away from the cable a little bit there that's a lot of power going into your vehicle it's not dangerous you don't need to inch away but <laughs> you get what i'm saying and then really anything over 200 kilowatts specifically when you get into the 250 270 like tycon 300 these are bleeding edge charging speeds fastest cars on the road today to accept power and that's where it's like okay so I hope that gives you like a good range of understanding that 50, not impressive, not fast. You'll very rarely find me charging at 50 kilowatts unless I'm driving my Leaf. Then I, that's the maximum I can do anyway. But if I'm driving a long range car, anything from a Model S to an EQS to Ionic 5 to ID4, 100, 100 kilowatts is my my low end of, of comfortable, I would say. Yeah. And I think this might be a bit of a clunky analogy, but right, the way you can think of um, electricity is all the same. I just want to preface it, but right, with gasoline cars, you have obviously premium standard fuel, right? And you pay more. Fast charging is like that. You pay more for the convenience, for the time that you're putting in, uh, usually just higher rates of uh, higher kilowatts into your car continuously. So it might seem complicated, but keep in mind, you know, let, let's say you drive like a BMW X7, you know, you need premium fuel. Well, if you're driving a big SUV like an yeah, e-tron or a BMW iX, you probably know that you want 200, let's say, kilowatts or at least 150 kilowatt stations. And that's not to say the nice thing about EVs is if you plug into a 50 kilowatt station, it's not like your car is going to get less powerful or explode. It'll just take a longer time to charge. So I'm making this analogy kind of to, I guess... You can look at the sheet that I'll link in the description, but just to tell you that you only need to memorize this once for your car, internalize it, and then you'll know, okay, I drive this car. Uh, I know these are the kind of chargers. This is the minimum number I usually want to see. Absolutely. You're a hundred percent right, Max, that for every newer EV driver, you and you can watch the charging speeds going into your vehicle. If it's F-150 Lightning, you'll see 175 going in. If it's Mach-E, you might see 155, somewhere around there, 160. Like you'll, you'll start to see what's the maximum and you'll get like, oh, there's actually no need to plug into a 350 if the 150 is giving me everything I need. You'll start to figure this out. So the two numbers, and I've said it a million times in this podcast, What's the maximum your car can charge at? 
and what's the maximum the charger can give you. We'll have other episodes talking about maybe why your car isn't charging at the maximum. A lot of it, it's the middle of winter right now. It's zero degrees Fahrenheit out here in Northern Colorado. When batteries are cold, they do not charge fast. I mean, I plugged my Rivian into a 350 kilowatt charger this morning and got 27 kilowatts because the battery was a a frozen brick. And so that's normal. There's nothing we can do about that. EV ownership is complicated in a sense. You know, I, I get a little bit annoyed by a lot of these uh, people out there that a other either undersell the complications of an electric car because you still need to understand things and B, try to make it simpler than it needs to be. I think most EV owners are capable of understanding their car's maximum kilowatt number and the charger's kilowatt number because it says it on the charger. That's all you need to know to get down the road comfortably. Yeah, absolutely agree. And maybe in 20 years, people will think, oh, people had to know octane rating for gas. What did that mean, right? And right now it seems strange, but it's just a number. It's just relative. It's pretty easy. Like you were saying earlier, higher is better, assuming your vehicle can take that. So we'll have that cheap list. Sorry, higher is faster, better if you're road tripping. But if you want to go to dinner, if you're going to a movie, maybe you plug into a slower charger because you want. That's true. I shouldn't necessarily say better because right there's there's no bad electricity. It's just convenient. So yeah, higher just means it'll charge faster. So if you want to find out the charger rating, you're going to see that on the charger. But for your vehicle, well, you can find your vehicle specs, but we're going to try to help you out. So that's why I'm making that Google Sheet. I'll link it in this video. That's going to have the most common EVs for sale and show their peak charge speed so you can or in kilowatts so you can uh just remember that internalize it for your car absolutely and just as sort of a final and we'll do again episodes on all of these individual topics but you're only going to get the maximum charging speed that your car allows if you a plug into a charger that can deliver it if you b have a warm battery pack if you see are in the state of charge range where your car can accept most power typically that's from let's just say 5% to 45 to 50%, that low down window. So if you arrive to a high power charger with a warm battery at low state of charge, that gives you in 95% of electric cars on the road, the best chance at getting the fastest charging speed in your car. So Kyle, to give people a picture, that would be like you and your Rivian this summer doing a road trip, right? Moderate temperatures. Let's say you drive like you do, you get it down to like 2%. It's almost empty, you pull into our charger. Those are the ideal conditions where you're hopefully seeing that ideal number, right? Yeah. And and actually the Rivian's kind of interesting and it gets a little bit nerdy, uh, but the Rivian wants so much power, more than typically what's available, that actually as it increases charge up to about 40%, it actually gets faster the deeper in the pack I go. And then it tapers oh, wow. after 40%. Yep. Because it just does a Again, nerd talk, 500 amp request, and as pack voltage comes up, it gets faster charging. That sort of expert level, watch out of spec reviews for those topics. I have whole (laughs) in-depth videos on that. But for the most part, if you're driving any American, German, whatever it is, electric car, arrive low, arrive warm, and plug it into a power, a charger that can deliver the power, and that's your best shot out there. And uh, we'll have a whole topic on battery warmth because driving your car, doesn't warm up your battery. There's other ways you have to do it. Yeah, it's common misconception, but a bunch of talk we can get into in future episodes. I'm so glad we had this discussion. And uh, I think, I hope, I think I, I agree with you. You're right. We're not trying to make this too simple. We know that you're not stupid. We're giving you the numbers. So hopefully this educates you and empowers you. Uh, and you can look up your EV in that sheet or just find the number uh, so that you have it and you're armed with this knowledge. So yeah. Great. Yep. Thanks for watching another episode of Out of Spec Guide. Thanks, Max, for rocking with this channel. And again, yeah, happy to have you on. Our goal is not to make EV ownership easy because it's not necessarily easy. It's just to give you all the details you need to know to navigate electric cars. Exactly. Much more to come. So thanks so much for watching and uh, see you next time. 